Shalom, everyone. Well, please be seated. Well, okay. Um, here we are for another class of the uh, teacher certification program, the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. Um, and I'd like to welcome everybody here in per that's here in person and everybody online. Uh, for those of you that are online, if you go to the top right hand corner, I'm trying to remember how it looks on my screen, top right hand corner, there will be a, uh, you press the button, there will be a drop down menu, and you can choose the book that we're in uh, tonight, which is the uh, acceptance unit uh, on the overhead there. If you didn't get an opportunity to see it, the acceptance unit right there. Okay? And so. Uh, you can go there and you can follow along. Um, I'd like to go ahead and turn over to page um, one one twenty three, I think it is. Sorry about that, I had two books up here. Got a little confused for a minute, I think. But page 123, this is where we ended up um, earlier in the week. Uh, be prepared to deal with setbacks. <clears throat> and actually, the, the, title, the title of this particular section is um, Reach for Your Goals. Reach for Your Goals. And, and what this is, is, uh, is maintaining... <clears throat> We've, we've got to, you got to reach for your goals, but you also have to maintain that plane that you're on, if you will, when you, when you're, when you set your goals and you're reaching your goals and a few failures along the way, you got to maintain that too. And so we're getting to that point here on maintaining it because we're going to be talking about how to deal with setbacks as they come. So let's do a real brief review over the last couple pages. And, um, and then we'll get started on page 123. But in the meantime, let's go back to 121 for just a moment for those of you that have a book. Goal maintenance requires character. Once you've decided on what your goals are and have written them down, the next step is to start putting your ideas into practice. In other words, you have to work at man maintaining your goals in order to accomplish them. To maintain a goal is to be committed in words, actions, words and actions to bring it to success. Now, uh, maintaining these uh, honest goals requires that you practice positive moral character traits, which we talked about some of them in the last class. Uh, responsibility, determination, courage, discipline, optimism, self-control, patience, all of these things. They work synergistically together to bring these things about. So the following are examples of how positive character traits can be used to maintain your goals. Now, this is something that you as a teacher, too, would want to be exhibiting to your students um, all the time. And one of the best ways, I would think, is if you have a, if you have a classroom that you're teaching in, uh, even if you don't, you can find other ways, but if you have a classroom you're teaching in, you could have different things uh, on the wall. You know, you, you, can, you can set goals, especially when you're in this chapter right here. Um, you, can, you can let them see that you're setting goals, um, you know, it, that it's a common thing in your particular classroom. Uh, you could have a, a goal chart on the wall for when you reach a certain goal where people can see it, you know. That's one of the things that, that's one of the things that I, I really found beneficial to, to enlist people um, into your into your goals, you know, uh, more than just a personal goal, but possibly something that the whole classroom could be involved in, or at work, or so forth. You could do a um, an illustration, an illustrative type goal, like a poster, and have have something on there, you know, that shows how far you've reached uh, to get to the if you've reached the goal or not, and how far you are away from it, and that enlists them to help you. But a responsible person is accountable for his or her decisions and actions. It says to do everything within your power to accomplish the task or tasks that are relevant to your goal. 
drop on down here a little bit. A determined person does not give up or quit. Determination in maintaining your goal means that even when things don't go as planned, you continue to try. And, and, and you're going to find that it doesn't always go according to plan, I can tell you. A courageous person will pursue a goal even with, when faced with opposition or is afraid of failing. Remember, being courageous doesn't mean that you have no fear. It means that you're willing to push through that and do the job anyway or stand up for what needs to be stood up for or, you know, you follow along. It's having the courage to do that, not being scared and backing down and not doing your job. Okay, let's go on over to page 122. <clears throat> Now, up at the top, an, op an optimistic person, and I put there that has self-control, that's one of my notes, but an optimistic person that has self-control accepts that although a situation may go wrong, there are still ways to achieve a goal. And this enables him or her to look on the bright side of things. Now, we're going to go a little bit further into this tonight, but keep that in mind, that being optimistic and having that self-control and, and you can look at that situation, even though things go wrong, you can still push through it. You can still find a way to achieve your goal. You look on the bright side of things. That, that's an important deal. A person with self-control does not act impulsively. Remember, self-control is stopping and thinking about things. You know, in the Peaceful Solution, I think everyone here has pretty much learned our, uh, along the way in some of the classes, we have a a STOP acronym, I might be jumping ahead a little bit, but the STOP acronym is stop, think, and consider your options and proceed. And what you want to proceed with is, is that course of action that does not hurt yourself, others, or property or the environment. You know, it's a very important thing to keep from acting impulsively. Acting impulsively does not work. It might work sometimes, but it's going to be, it's going to probably not work more times than work. Um, now, a patient person is able to handle disappointments or adversity calmly and, and without complaining. Patience in goal setting means accepting that plans will not always go as expected. In other words, there will be times when you will have to wait for what you want. Really? Going to have to wait? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you don't just get everything right away. You, you have to learn to, to you know, work for it, to save for it, and so forth. A disciplined person will consistently make choices that will enable a goal to be successive, successfully accomplished. So that's discipline, a disciplined person. And, um, of course, it gave the example. We read it uh, in the last class for those of you that weren't here. Here's an example. You have two hours before your friend and his father come to pick you up. Well, you've got to do your homework, mow the lawn, and there's a really great TV show you'd like to watch, too, all in this two hours. <laughs> you're going to have to stop and think, what are your highest priorities? You're, you're not going to get all that stuff done. So, yeah, homework and mowing the lawn, you can probably get done in that two hours. You know, go with the show another time or, or do some more homework or something. Now, let's move on over to page 123. Now, this is where we were at uh, in the last class. We were a couple paragraphs down, but I'm going to go ahead and start at the top. Being prepared to deal with setbacks. Now, when planning goals, it's important to consider the things that could keep you from achieving your objectives. Circumstances that interfere with reaching your goals are called setbacks. There will be times when, as hard as you try to plan for every problem, there's going to be unexpected difficulties along the way. A great goal maintenance plan takes into consideration possible setbacks and the most effective way to deal with them. So. You're, you're looking at it and, and having a plan early on because you're not always going to have that. I don't, I hesitate to use the word success. Um, success is, is, is all of this when you put it all together and use it. And even if you have a failure, it can still be success in how you deal with it. So, so in that way, it, it's success. But, but you're going to have failure sometimes in reaching your goals. And um, setbacks can come in many different forms, shapes, and sizes. Sometimes circumstances will occur that are beyond your control. And we talked a little bit about this uh, in the last class and, and even beyond, but 
But sometimes things are going to occur that you just didn't foresee, you didn't expect. Um, you know, emergency comes up, <laughs> a road gets blocked on your blocked on your way to somewhere. You just don't know. Now, this is where learning to accept that there are some things you can control and some things you can't is really helpful. I remember, <laughs> I remember one of the uh, uh, animated uh, stories of the peaceful solution. Um, a young girl really had, you know, waited a long time to get a certain doll, and um, and when uh, when her and her mom went to get that doll, it's like the the last one flew off the shelf right in front of her eyes. Someone else got it, you know, and the girl started throwing a fit. Well, so she had an opportunity to learn that being patient and practicing self-control would benefit her more, you know. Um, and and that's, the, that's the way we should look at it. When some of these things occur, some of these setbacks, some of the things that we didn't really count on that occur and, and, and block us from from uh, reaching our goal at the time, you know, it could be a setback, I, you, you could call it a failure, but um, I guess really the only failure is if you don't keep trying. So so these setbacks are going to come and we have to learn how to, how to react to them and how to uh, proact to be prepared for them in advance. All right. So, so this is where learning to accept that there are some things you, you can control and some things you can't is helpful. For example, there's finally an opening available on the debating team. And this is for a school age person. However, the morning of the tryouts, you wake up with laryngitis. Well, illness, accidents, unexpected changes are all circumstances that are beyond your control and can affect whether you achieve your goals. So other common obstacles to achieving your goals are a lack of planning, a lack of organizing, and making bad choices. Now, when you're doing these things, it's almost like you're setting the stage to fail. You're, <clears throat> if you're not if you're not uh, planning and organizing and uh, to achieve these goals and you make bad decisions along the way, just like in the previous, uh, on the previous page of the young man in the example, if he would have chose to watch the TV show instead of doing the homework and mowing the lawn, that, those would have been bad choices. And, and he probably wouldn't be achieving his goal uh, on, on what, what the rest of his goals are. So, like unexpected situations, these setbacks can create barriers. And uh, <laughs> you'll notice, you know, I like this little picture here. We've used it in a, in a couple areas in the Peaceful Solution. But see the brick wall with the young man behind it, and here comes the, the rocket at him, you know. The setbacks, here it comes, you know. Well, he's got a wall built up there in front of him, so hopefully you hopefully can deal with it. The, so these... Uh, these setbacks can create barriers, but accepting that setbacks can occur is your opportunity to plan for healthy, effective ways to deal with them. Did you hear that? To plan for healthy, effective ways to deal with them. It's setting your mind in advance. In fact, having a plan to deal with possible barriers will lessen the opportunity for failure and disappointment, which often lead to goal abandonment. Now that would be failure. Like it says right there, it would uh, by setting your mind in advance and and having a plan to deal with these things, it will lessen the opportunity for failure. Because failure is when you don't move on, you don't you don't pick up and 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 start over again and get going, you know. So for failure and disappointment, which which often leads to goal abandonment, as it says. Okay, so so be prepared. Have that uh, have a wall of protection built up there, you know, to to uh, to help you with those setbacks as they come your way. Let's uh, let's turn over to page one twenty four. Now on page one twenty four, says the following are three easy ways to handle setbacks and barriers. So we're going to get some uh, some uh, positive ways to handle these things right here. Um, be prepared, number one, be prepared to be resourceful and flexible. A resourceful person is willing to devise ways and means to handle a situation 
and to change plans if necessary in order to effectively deal with unexpected situations. So being resourceful, having, a, of course, resources, that's what being resourceful is, but, but having, uh, of course, planning and the organization and everything, you, you've got things uh, kind of behind you. You have, you, you, have, you have other things at your right hand that you could take hold of and help push you through to achieving your goal, you know. You, you can devise ways and means to handle the situation and, and even be willing to change your plans to go another way around to achieving your goal. You know, okay, you were blocked one way, but, you know, you pull out of your toolbox here, your resource box, you've got another way to go, see? So the best way to accomplish this is to have a backup plan. You know, you've heard plan B, you know, people say that all the time. Well, plan A didn't work. It's time for plan B, which is just another way of going about it. So, for example, you've got to get an interview for a summer job, but you know that sometimes your parents' car has problems starting. Well, if you're, if you're not a mechanic and everything and just ready to go out there and, and get it going, uh, you get permission to arrange a ride with your friend's parents just in case your car breaks down. So, see... Thinking in advance, being resourceful, you know, having a plan, being organized, getting it all together in case something goes wrong. And that way, that way you don't start blaming your parents because their car's not working as well as it could, you know. Uh, that's what a lot of people do that find themselves not achieving their goals is that they'll deal with it in a negative manner and start blaming others for not achieving their goals. Well, that's not the way to go about it. That never did help anybody achieve their goals, okay? We're talking about being optimistic and dealing with the, these things in positive ways, all right? So number two, wear your positive character traits like a suit of armor. Traits such as, uh, you know, here you are putting on your, your suit of armor. You've got this... Uh, determination you know here you've got uh, your your courage uh, here and your your patience you know you, you you've got uh, you got it all together you have this coat of armor on and these things can help you keep things in perspective so often when things don't go your way the tendency is to give up well if you've got your coat of armor on there your character traits if you if you're practicing them and you have them ready to go when things don't go your way Instead of giving up, you're going to go back to finding another way, changing the plan if necessary, you know, getting some other resources involved, getting some help along the way, asking for help. All these things work together with being positive. A negative person would fold up and just, just give up and go off and cry in the corner somewhere and, and just give up on the whole thing, you know. Moral positive goals that will benefit you and others are worth pursuing even when we suffer setbacks. So i got a little story to tell you here in a moment, but uh, number three is maintain a positive attitude. You'll learn from this experience. Find a way to turn it into something positive. So I know somebody that um, was uh, preparing a, um, what's the best way I can say this, uh, a, a certain concoction with different herbs and so forth in it, you know, and I thought it was a pretty neat idea, uh, but it was going to take a long time, and it did. It took like, oh, you know, hours and hours, and then the next day it took several more hours just to prepare this thing. Well, at the end, something went wrong, and it didn't turn out quite like it was supposed to, and this concoction all had to be thrown away. All right, hours and hours of work went into this. You can imagine the person's frustration at not having achieved success with this certain thing. And they were a little disappointed at first, but you know what? By, you know, having a positive mindset, they realized that, you know what? This is the first time I tried this. You know, people with experience have surely you know, had failures along the way and had to figure out how to do something to make it work properly, you know. So this is, I'll just chalk this up to experience and I'll get started and do it again, you know. I mean, I saw that with my own eyes. It was very interesting um, 
And, and so I would say that the person did keep a very positive attitude about it, though there was a little bit of disappointment and frustration right when it first occurred. So, uh, and sometimes a positive word from you or someone else, especially as a, especially as a teacher. You know, we have to keep in mind when, when we're teaching these lessons, too, and we're dealing one-on-one with students, um, smaller situations than, than what we have right here, but you have an opportunity to mention positive reinforcement along the way. You know, somebody, somebody had, I mean, of all the people I see in this room right now, if everybody started out on a project tonight that had to be done in the morning, there's probably going to be some failures. You know, some people are not going to meet that goal. But instead of, you know, downing somebody, <clears throat> what you do is give them some positive reinforcement and let them know that, hey, we can still use this. Let's get it going. We can still go ahead and finish your project. You've got help right here, you know, and you can pitch in and help out. So as a teacher, we always want to be giving that example of being resourceful and flexible and having our our character coat of armor on, you know, you, uh, exhibiting these positive character traits at all times so that when things don't go the way we thought they should go, um, you know, our students know how to conduct themselves. So disappointments in life will occur from time to time. We're in the... Uh, we're, we're past the three different uh, uh, suggestions there. Disappointments in life will occur from time to time, and by having a positive attitude, you can turn your disappointments into victory and come out a winner when you remain optimistic and determined. It's all in controlling your attitude and abiding by what you've learned from the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. And, and you'll, hear, you'll hear these things along the way, all throughout the Peaceful Solution. Just like that one sentence. It's all in controlling your attitude and abiding by what you've learned from the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. You'll hear this a lot throughout the Peaceful Solution because all these things work together. Setbacks can also be an opportunity to learn about yourself, to develop or strengthen aspects of your character, and to practice those lessons that you learned from this program. Think about it. How can you develop the positive character trait of patience if you get everything you want right away? I don't know if there's anybody in here who gets everything they want right away. I don't know of any. But how can you develop determination if you never have had to deal with adversity? You know, if, <clears throat> if your life was going along like this, just rosy as could be, and you never had any setbacks or adversity, how would you know how to deal with anything? You know, it's kind of like a it's kind of like a battery. Um, for those of you who are familiar with a battery, let's let's use a car battery for instance. A car battery has a has a negative terminal right here and a positive terminal right here, and you've got to have both to work together. You've got the positive, but without the negative, it's not working. So you have to have these negative things or these setbacks, all these things that come your way to build up your character, to, to try your character, to test it, if you will, to test your character, to see how far you're coming along. So you could actually look at it as a friend. When this adversity comes along, instead of looking at it and, and um, you know, getting mad and frustrated and throwing a fit and everything, you could look at it as a friend and say, you know, that, that's, that's great that this came along because I see where I need a little bit of help. Similar to when someone that likes to uh, push your buttons, for instance, you know. Uh, you know, they come up and, and every time you see them, you're like, oh, there's that guy again, you know. <laughs> well, you know, start looking at that person as a friend because they're actually helping you to achieve patience, respect, uh, understanding that everybody is valuable and everybody has purpose in life, you know. So start looking at it that way. Look at adversity as a friend. So the next time things don't go the way you plan and you have to deal with a setback, think first about what you've learned in this program and apply it to the problem. Think first about it. Think first and, and realize it's an opportunity to learn, an opp opportunity to learn where you stand and, and what you've achieved in being able to handle different aspects of, um, of your character. Um, in fact, let's, uh, if you've got, 
remember the character unit. The character unit, uh, we refer to it from time to time um, because it was the it, it was the foundational book that we started with. And um, so on page 80, on page 80, it's entitled, Set Your Mind in Advance. <clears throat> I'm just going to read this to you real quick. Um, have you ever heard the saying, it's all in your head? Well, most people say it sarcastically, but there's some truth to it. Whether you're aware of it or not, every action begins with a thought. So setting your mind in advance to maintain your positive character traits begins by first considering just how important it is to have a moral character. Yeah, we need, we need to consider that and come to a conclusion on that, you know, to go any further, really. So to be trusted, admired, respected, and known as an honest, reliable, compassionate person is something everybody should want. So the next step is to make up your mind not to be influenced to do anything that will compromise your character. In other words, determine in your mind that no one can talk you into doing something you know is wrong. This is called setting your mind in advance. For example, you know stealing is wrong? Set your mind in advance to always respect another person's property as you would want others to respect yours. So taking this over to the lesson we're in now and applying it, you set your mind in advance. You know that blowing your top because you failed at the at reaching your goal and and you know throwing something or or, or you know being angry at somebody and going off on them. You know that's not going to help. Or blaming others, that's not going to help. So set your mind in advance to keep to to do things that will not compromise your character and be optimistic and positive about it. And it goes on. It's a great uh, section right there. You know, it talks about watching your thoughts and so forth. You could go back and review that whole section because it does apply heavily to this portion that we're in right now. So just remember, though, um, re remember that, uh, uh, and I'm going to read the sentence out of here on page 124. It says, how can you develop determination if you never have to deal with adversity? You know, burn, burn that in your mind. I mean, really, really put it in there so that you can remember next time there is some adversity. Yeah, set your mind in advance. You know, look at it as an opportunity to learn. Look at it as a friend. But remember that sentence right there. How can you develop determination if you never have had to deal with adversity? Okay? Try, try to remember that. That's very, very important. Let's, let's move on over to page 125. Now, we're going to read this scenario and devise a plan to overcome the setback and come out a winner, okay? For two years, you've been trying to win the local science fair. This year, you came up with a great project. You did all the research and painstakingly built the display model all by yourself. It took you an entire week to finish it. Well, when it was completed, it looked just like the one in the science magazine that you'd seen, and you felt confident that this time you had an award-winning project. In fact, everything went so well that you were finished two weeks in advance. Imagine that. Now, a week before the project was due, you came home from school just in time to hear your mother telling your little brother that he did not have permission to enter your room and touch your belongings. Oh, boy. When you go into your room to see what he had touched, you see the model that you had spent so much time working on laying broken on the floor where it had fallen. All this work, man, well, how would you feel? You know, now, if you weren't practicing the peaceful solution, you know, I, I know how I would have felt, you know, some years ago. Uh, probably screaming and yelling and out of control. You know, I, mean, I could just think of the things that I would say to my little brother. But, you know, in practicing the peaceful solution, we've got to keep these things in mind. But anyway, the, the question is, how would you feel? So, obviously, it would be hard not to feel sad, a little bit angry and disappointed, right? So, would you classify this as a setback? Well, um, would everybody classify this as a setback? Yeah, I, I think we all would. And yeah, it is because, you know, now it's got to be redone. Now, what positive character traits would you need to handle the situation appropriately with your little brother? Oh, man, where does the list stop? You know, <laughs> patience, kindness, compassion, respect, 
self-control. All of these things come into play. You've got to have it. Acceptance. You know, all you have to have all these things. Now, um, what positive character traits would you need to turn this set back into victory? Well, of course, you've got to have that pers persistence, that determination, the endurance, and the patience. Number five asks, can you identify the bright side of this situation? Remember, you worked on this thing, and, and uh, you got it done, and it was ready to go, and it was just a wonderful science project, and you came in, and your little brother had knocked it to the floor and broken it, right? So can you identify the bright side of this situation? How could identifying the bright side help you formulate a plan of action? And by handling the setback appropriately and, appropriately and using your positive character traits, what could you learn about yourself? Well, you know, you've actually got time to finish it again since you already did it in one week anyway. You've still got a week, so you could get right on it and and get started you could probably get your little brother to help you out a little bit too who knows maybe even other family members since you know you've, you've got quite a, a deal there to deal with and and you're handling it very well and staying calm so people would probably be joyful to help you out um, and then by handling this setback appropriately you could learn that you're being a great teacher just by your actions and themselves and that's one of the things we do want to remember too is that when we're teaching the peaceful solution, we teach it not only by by phys physical uh, verbal um, lessons, but we also teach it by everything that we do and say, how how we conduct ourselves in situations in adverse situations. Um, that's the thing that people are really going to be looking at. You've got to keep that in mind because. You know, to to hear to hear something like, uh, "Oh well, yeah, they talk a great story, but did you see how he acted the other day when you know such and such occurred?" You know, you never want to hear something like that as a teacher of the peaceful solution. You, you need to be the example. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have setbacks too. You're gonna have some failures, but you got to get up and go on. Leave yourself room to grow, and and move on. And, and apologize if something is done uh, around somebody and, and you know, let them know quickly that you apologize for what has been done that wasn't right. Let's, uh, let's turn over to page 126. We're going to try to go ahead and, and move through this and finish up. We've got, um, you know, on page 127, we're going to come to 126 in a minute, but page 127 it, it uh, in the peaceful solution, it, it suggests some enrichment activities like you know a field trip or or assigning two minute speeches about uh, a goal and how a person would uh, plan to accomplish it, and then you've got a, a word uh, problem puzzle on page 128, which a lot of people like to do, and also on page 129, also a crossword type puzzle. So, which are positive, it has positive things. Um, let's go back to 126. Okay, so we're going to be <clears throat> reviewing here uh, what we've learned in this chapter. And this is entitled, you know, appropriately, What I've Learned. So our number one point, achieving goals is a part of daily life. Sometimes goals are set without any conscious effort and, and might not even be recognized as goals. Okay, so we did talk about this. We talked about how things, um, you know, throughout the day, we might <clears throat> might just say, you know, well, I got to get this finished by lunchtime. You know, it might be 11 o'clock and you got an hour left or something. And it's just something that just pops in there. You say it, it's over with. Well, guess what? You just set a goal, you know. You might not have set out to... Uh, say, uh, let me set this goal now, this goal of getting done by lunchtime, and I'm going to write this down and take a look at it and, and ingrain it in my mind to get this done. You know, no, you just you just said, you know, i got to get this done, and you did it. You set the goal, and you move forward, and you got it done, right? So these are those short-term goals. Let, let's turn back to 109 real quick, though, and page 109. <clears throat> And some of these are actually, some of these goals are actually completely unconscious, if you will. Um, let, let's look at this. This is the introduction to the chapter. Again, we're in chapter six, Reach for Your Goals. 
Did you know that you've been achieving goals since birth? A goal is an end that you strive to attain. Walking, talking, attending school for the first time. Yeah, you know, you were setting goals when your parents stood you on your feet when you could first do it and sat out there in front of you a few feet away and said, come on now, take that first step, come on, take a step, you know. You were, you were in, your, in your mind, you were setting a goal to, to do that very thing, you know. Uh, but you didn't, you know, you didn't realize that, of course, at the time. So uh, walking, talking, attending school for the first time, even learning how to ride a bike, they're all goals that you've already accomplished. As you grow, there are goals that you will automatically achieve simply by moving from one developmental stage to the next. The developmental stages from infancy to childhood and from adolescence to adulthood are times of incredible physical, mental, and cognitive growth. You reach these milestones without even being aware of them, you know, in most cases. However, there's a vast difference between goals you have accomplished because you've reached certain developmental stages and goals that you consciously set and strive to attain. So, see, there are differences here on this goal setting. Learning to consciously set and achieve positive moral goals is an important part of growing up. Yep, I'm getting a little older now, set some goals, you know, work towards that goal. That's what working towards it is. And this will show that you're maturing and that you have self-control. Uh, I'm going to continue that paragraph there. And that you are responsible and disciplined. It is also one more step in achieving a positive moral character and accepting yourself as a worthwhile human being. Accepting yourself. You've got to accept yourself, you know, to accept others. You, you, you've got to... You've got to... Uh, have a positive attitude about yourself also. All right, let's go back to page 126. Point number two. When I set my mind on something I want to do, I can take the necessary steps to achieve it. Okay, I want to set my mind on something. All right, and I'm going to have to take some steps to achieve it. Let's see, I might have to get this and this. I'm going to, oh, okay. Let me get some help from so-and-so over here. Uh, so anyway, see, so when you set your mind in advance, you've got to take the necessary steps to achieve it. There's going to be planning. There's going to be the organizational stage. There's going to be the, the time that you take the first step of actually putting it into action after you've got everything ready. But let's turn to page 110. Page 110, if you, um, if you go on, now you could read the whole thing, but uh, if you go down towards the bottom there, the last paragraph, in addition to setting goals to fulfill your purpose in life, you can set goals to better yourself. For example, you can improve your grades or learn to play an instrument. In other words, you can set goals for, you, for what you want to achieve and for what you want to improve in. So... Back to that point on page 126, when I set my mind on something I want to do, something you want to achieve, I can take the necessary steps to achieve it. It's something that you want to approve in, improve in. Uh, point number three on page 126. Now, consciously setting goals helps me to succeed in life. All right, let's turn to page 113 to take a look at that. Page 113. All right. Look at the uh, second paragraph on page 113. We, we might go back to the first, but the second paragraph says, Self-control and morality are the foundation of all positive goals. People who stop, think, and set morally positive goals demonstrate respect for themselves and others. Setting positive goals will allow them to lead a life that is fulfilling and rewarding. Now, these people are also examples and role models to those around them. On the other hand, goals that are made impulsively and because of emotions such as hate, anger, revenge, or jealousy can result to harm, uh, in harm to oneself and others. So, when, uh, when, looking at, um, when looking at this consciously setting these goals to succeed in life, 
the the self control and morality are are very necessary to achieve these goals you know to achieve positive goals you know people who stop and think remember we talked about self control and setting these morally positive goals they demonstrate respect for themselves and others in the previous paragraph i'm going to go ahead and read it too to determine if your goals are positive moral or honest or negative immoral and dishonest think carefully about the outcome or the end result if you were to achieve your goal how could it affect you and those around you you know what's going to be the repercussions what are going to be the rewards or the consequences of you achieving this goal keep in mind that the ability to stop think and weigh the consequences of your actions is called self control valuing your life and possessions and that of others is the basis of moral or ethical principles um re- remember that right there the valuing your life and possessions and that of others is the basis of moral ethical principles now um uh in point number 4 on page 126 i choose to set only positive goals not negative ones negative goals can be harmful hurtful and dangerous to myself and others positive goals can help me achieve my purpose in life and build my moral character let's turn over to page 112 <clears throat> Now on page 112 also you might want to keep in mind page uh 14 on um in the character unit we'll go there in just a minute but on page 112 it talks about the difference between the positive and negative goals and so what we're talking about here of course is the uh let me get back to it what we're talking about here is choosing to set only positive goals not negative ones so we're going to look at a little bit of the difference between the positive and negative goals let's start at the top page 112 in the acceptance unit although there are many different types of goals most goals can be categorized as either positive or negative a moral positive goal is beneficial for yourself and others it strengthens and motivates you to succeed and will build moral character a negative immoral goal is not advantageous healthy or beneficial if it is achieved it could result in harm to yourself and others and there's there's plenty of people out there setting goals you know each and every day they're setting goals that you know some are positive i'm sure not everybody sets only negative goals but there there are people that that relish uh setting negative goals uh, um they would consider them to be positive because they're achieving something they want to do but they they haven't learned the difference between positive and negative goals and they haven't learned the difference between positive character and negative character so <clears throat> excuse me let's take a look at the first column positive goals now positive honest moral goals will help you to be a better person they will support your choice to develop a moral character and here's an example 12 year old randy wants a great grade on his math test and wanting to earn it honestly he's studying and got an a uh then the next one is positive honest moral goals cause no harm and have no negative effects to yourself or others okay example john is tired of being picked on by the school bully He plans to find a peaceful way to handle the problem by speaking to his parents and guidance counselors. So that's a positive way to deal with it. Now let's look at the next one. Positive, honest, moral goals will help you achieve your purpose. Example: Valerie's purpose is to help others. Her goal is to become a nurse. All right. So if you turn over to page 14 in your um, character unit, if you have it. what we've got is it's called the positive side of character and the next couple pages list several of the positive character uh traits that you would want to familiarize familiarize yourself with number 1 which i'm sure everyone in this room knows and, and most that have had anything to do with the peaceful solution is being educated now educated we're not just talking about being educated and knowing how to um figure math problems and how to read and spell and write and so forth we're talking about being educated by getting all the facts 
in a situation and making sure they're correct before making a decision. I remember one of the other teachers a, a while back um, told us, you know, in, in one of the lessons he was going over that, you know, facts can be true and facts can be false. There are there can be positive facts and negative facts. You know, there's it's just the facts, you know. These are the facts of this matter. And they might be right, they might be wrong. So getting all the facts, the right, the, the true facts, making sure they are correct and true before making a decision. For example, your friends offer you some glue to sniff. You'd already been researching it and know how damaging that can be to your brain, and you tell them no. And you warn them of the dangers too, standing up in the face of adversity. To be respectful. Um, to value others as important as yourself and to allow that to show through your actions, actions and attitudes. And, and one of the ways to do this, too, is to realize, actually in the character unit uh, again, um, page 6, page 6 in the character unit, one, one of the ways to uh, achieve this is to, You've got to have a value system, and values are what you believe in or feel strongly about. If you didn't believe in and feel strongly about having positive character and treating people right, and 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 believing you you know you're not better than anybody else, that everybody has value and and has a purpose in life, but if you if you didn't value these things you would have no reason to continue on in, in doing anything, even with the piece of solution. So values are what you believe in or feel strongly about, and they also play a key role in developing your character. The sum total of everything you value becomes your value system. So you've got, you've got a number of things that you value, and you add them all together. You put them together, and that's your value system. And your value system can be changed, too. Keep in mind... That as you mature and grow, your parents share their values with you, teachers, friends, other people that you're in contact with, whatever their values are, can you know blend over into you if you're not careful. So you got to be on guard and you got to watch out for those influences too. That's a great section to read about values too, that you might want to um, might want to rehearse. <clears throat> But this can help you to achieve your positive goals by, by having all these things in mind that work together in every way. Let's take a quick look at the, neg the negative goals. The negative and moral goals will compromise your choice to have an honest moral character and to be a better person. So, for example, 12-year-old Michelle is determined to experiment with drugs by the time she's 13. Now, what kind of goal is that? Are you serious? You know, that, that's a negative goal. Why would she want to do something like that? You know, well, because of the influences by, her, you know, friends and whatever else and, and her values. You know, she doesn't, her, her value system is not right. So she's got these negative goals. Well, now the next one, it says negative and moral goals cause harm and have negative effects on others. Example. John is tired of being picked on by the school bully, so he plans to retaliate by bringing a weapon to school. Now, how many times in the news have we read of situations where that actually occurred and people lost their life? You know, at the worst, someone got hurt and went to jail and so forth, but a lot of people lost their life, you know. And then on the next point, it says that negative immoral goals can prevent you from achieving your purpose. Example, Landon's purpose is to become rich one day. Well, okay, that's, that's his uh, purpose, and he's going to set a goal to get there, but his goal is to sell drugs. That's how he's going to get rich. <laughs> well, he's probably going to end up in jail, for, you know, but he could die and cause other people's deaths and harm to other people. This is a very negative goal. In your character unit on page 19, there it starts a list of the negative character traits that the most common negative character traits um, you know impatient aggressive disrespectful hateful uh, dishonest revengeful unforgiving and unreliable and number one on the list is being uneducated you know not getting the facts the true facts before making a decision 
and then you know doing something that you look back on and decide man i, I would i wouldn't have done that you know so uh, keep those things in mind review these things and let's go back to page 126 All right, page uh, 126. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, page 126. Um, let's see. In number five, I will make sure my goals are realistic and attainable, and I'm willing to challenge myself, pushing my limits uh, of success. Okay, page uh, 116. If you turn to page 116, and the first paragraph up there, it says, Now that you know the importance of setting goals that are positive, the next step is to be realistic about the goals you set. Realistic means to be sensible and practical. Remember, you're not going to set out to build a skyscraper and have it done by the end of the week. It's not going to work. You know, um, uh, Goals that are realistic are well-planned. Goals that are unrealistic are poorly planned or not planned at all. They're pursued without consideration of all that would be required for them to be accomplished. To be realistic about the goals you set, take into account the following questions. How long will it take? Number two, can you accomplish this by yourself? Number three, are you going to need additional information? Number four, that's a big, this is a big one. What sacrifices are you going to be willing to make, you know? And then number five, well, you need some money to accomplish your goals. So you've got to consider all of these things, you know, um, when setting your goals. Be realistic, okay? And then uh, number six, <clears throat> setbacks or obstacles are a normal part of life and can affect accomplishing my goals. With careful planning and positive character traits, I can deal with setbacks and achieve my goals. Okay, so this is kind of kind of where we started tonight, you know. Let's let's go over that part because this is such an important uh, such an important part of it, you know, to be to be willing to and be able to deal with the uh, and I'm going to use the term from the character unit the curveballs and pitfalls, you know, uh, being prepared to deal with these setbacks and and not let them turn into a complete failure. It might, you know. It might, but with some planning and with some backup and having the resources, um, you know, keeping in mind all the things that we've been learning to help you achieve your goal, if, you, if you've planned properly and you've thought about everything, you have so much more of a possibility of achieving your goal. But be prepared to deal with the setbacks. So... When planning the goals, it's important to consider the things that could keep you from achieving your objectives. And these things that interfere are called setbacks. <coughs> Excuse me. There will be times when as hard as you try to plan for every problem, there's going to be unexpected difficulties along the way. A great goal maintenance plan takes into consideration possible setbacks and the most effective ways to deal with them. Setbacks can come in many different forms, shapes, and sizes, and sometimes circumstances will occur that are beyond your control. And that's, that's really the thing that, that I'm stressing in, in this section is that these things that are beyond your control. I, I'm going to consider that, that everyone here really wants to set realistic goals and, and really with, their, with, with learning the Peace of Solution Character Education Program and learning to teach it, you're going to want to teach your students to set the realistic goals. But you've also got to remind uh, or remember that no matter how well you plan and organize, you're going to have setbacks from time to time because some of them are just beyond your control. Just like some of the examples, we don't have time to go all in them, but just like all the, the examples that were given throughout this, this lesson on, on what can occur uh, as far as the circumstances beyond your control that you didn't have any control on on the city shutting down a street uh, that that was instrumental in your getting to where you needed to go at a certain time and now you've got to go three blocks out of the way which might make you late you had no control over that but you did have control about planning in advance in case there was a setback or something beyond your control 
that you could then take care of. That's the part I would really like you to walk away from tonight. Uh, if anything, having that in your mind and having a way to relay it to your students is that even though there are things, these circumstances and these setbacks that, that occur and they're beyond our control, that doesn't mean that they're beyond our dealing with it. And part of dealing with it is back to setting your mind in advance, remember, coming up with a plan, coming up with an option on what might be available. Remember plan A and plan B, having a plan B in case something does go wrong, some unforeseen thing. You know, the person that has a flat tire on the way to work and, and is late and loses their job and, and, and then wants to blame everybody else really doesn't have anybody to blame because being, you know, being aware, setting your mind in advance, making sure that you do have a spare tire, making sure you do have a jack, making sure you do know how to operate it, or making sure that you have some other way of dealing with it, or the car breaks down on the way to work, well, having, having a plan B in mind in case that occurs too. It might not work out. Your plan B might have a, have a problem with it. Your plan B might have something take place with it beyond your control. But see, at least you're trying. So, so be prepared. Be prepared for the unforeseen that might come your way, you know. Um, just moving on down that page, other common obstacles to achieving your goals are lack of planning, lack of organizing, and making bad choices. Like unexpected situations, these setbacks can create barriers. And you have to remember that. Accepting that setbacks can occur is your opportunity, remember, remember your opportunity to learn, to plan for healthy, effective ways to deal with them. And then on page 124, of course, being prepared, the, the three things to be prepared, be prepared to be resourceful and flexible, remaining flexible, and then having resources, the you know thoughts in mind, some organization. Number two, wear your positive character traits. Always have that patience and the determination and courage and the self-control so that when things don't go your way, you're not just going to throw it all away. Number three, maintain a positive attitude so you can find a way to turn this into something positive. And, and that's the thing. Remember, setbacks are going to occur on, on your journey on achieving your goals. And so for you to be prepared by setting your mind in advance for what might come that way, and if it all doesn't work out and you still don't achieve that goal, remember you can look at it with the opportunity to learn, okay? And with that, I'd like to thank everybody for coming tonight. And so uh, let's see, Sunday, uh, December, um, was that the 5th? 5th? Uh, we will have uh, another class starting at 5.30 and uh, 5.30 to 6.30, and we look forward to everybody also attending. Thank you.